And welcome back. It's time for this week's Capital Report. It's Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, of course, the legislative session gets underway on Monday with Governor Fallon's uh, State of the State address. So what things do you expect uh, to hear from the governor? And name two or three kind of major themes or issues you anticipate for the 2015 session. I'm going to pack them together uh, to save time and just say that a lot of things we've been talking about over time uh, in this uh, weekend segment will be front and center, stage center for the coming legislative session. And I think most of the things I'm going to touch on right now will be in Governor Fallon's speech. First of all, justice reinvestment. Um, <clears throat> she signed the bill two years ago. Uh, it sounds like all three are on the same page, at least in saying all three, her as well as Bingman and uh, uh, Speaker uh, Hickman, are all on the same page about advancing on that issue. They're saying that we might not be able to afford implementation. Of course, they didn't start implementation in the salad days, you know, when the budget was comparatively stronger. It is going to be a little tighter, at least the appropriated monies. The governor's indicated she might use revolving funds. That might help solve some issues, but you've got to be careful in doing that depending on what the purpose of the revolving right. fund is. So in any case, I think I, I say again, Scott Edmund, the minority leader in the House, I think he was right when he said, we've studied this long enough, we don't need the governor's new commission. The commission might do some good, her special panel consisting all of Republicans, although this was originally a bipartisan measure. We'll see. I think that's going to be important. Right-sizing government. Governor says uh, there will be possible agency cuts and possible use of revolving funds, as I mentioned. I guess my question is, when are we going to see right-sizing? which she talked about four years ago and then again last year in her re-election campaign. That means cuts, cuts of functions, not necessarily total spending, which might be unrealistic, but cuts and functions. We've seen some consolidation, but not a whole lot of cuts. Yeah. Not a whole lot of consolidation. It's mostly been on the IT front. And candidly, there's some people that say that hasn't helped much, that it hasn't really saved money. Wind power as an example of tax credits and exemptions and some of the controversy surrounding some of the business incentives. Those will be a big issue. Wynn leading the way, but a lot of the others will be discussed too. Finally, Superintendent Bingman, a uh, Superintendent Bingman, isn't that <laughs> funny? Hoffmeister. Superintendent Hoffmeister <laughs> and my friend Senator Bingman, the uh, President Pro Tem, uh, are both saying teachers need pay increases. McGuigan's reply uh, is maybe they do. How about let's first take a real close look at the things public education does and see if it's efficient or accountable and use money that could get freed up to pay for teacher pay increases rather than expecting additional money. All right. Well, we'll be watching those things. Now, you've reported on a, a new documentary that tells the story of the peaceful sit-ins at the lunch counter is in, it, lunch counters in Oklahoma City, guided by the uh, late civil rights leader, Clara Looper. Quick word on that. A, the quick word is Children of the Civil Rights, a documentary by Julia Clifford daughter of Bill Clifford, part of the, the Clifford family here in Oklahoma City. Beautiful documentary forthcoming February 7th at the Oklahoma History Center. We're out of time, but I commend it to everybody. It's about those sit-ins which were here every bit as important as things like what happened in Selma. All right. Well, you can read more about those and other topics at capitalbeatok.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.